For our evening meditation, I'd like to read, first of all, a few verses from Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. Of the many predictions in the Old Testament concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, his coming as the Son of God, coming as the Messiah, the Anointed One uh, of God, the Messiah of Israel, and King of the Jews and Son of David, we find that he's also referred to as the Good Shepherd. You will remember he said that I am the Good Shepherd. And these were words in particular, having particular reference to Jehovah's connection with and interest in and ownership of Israel. The kings in Israel and in Judah were also called shepherds. One of the terms that God used of them indicating that they had a real responsibility not to feed themselves or to uh, gain money and other po and powers for themselves, but they were to take care of the people. They were to be concerned for the welfare of the people. And in, in Ezekiel 34, we have a, a categorical denunciation of the king uh, in, uh, in Judah because they were not good shepherds. They didn't take care of their flock. They didn't care what happened to them. They were guilty, not only morally and spiritually, but they were guilty in economic matters as well. But God promised, God promised that he was going to be their shepherd, and he would come and send a shepherd, both coming as a shepherd and sending a shepherd, prophecies pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ, who was going to say when he got here that I'm come to seek and to save that which was lost, referring to the lost sheep of Israel. Now a few verses. First in Ezekiel 34, verses 1 and 2. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Then notice what he says in verses 11 through 13. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. And then a few more things that he says in verse 22. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. And he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the place round about my hill a blessing and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord, when I have broken the bands of their yoke, and deliver them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. 
There are a few things that we'd like to say as we're thinking of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ through his virgin birth and the incarnation. It's well for us to bear in mind <coughs> the relationship of the Lord Jesus to Israel. Next Lord's Day we want to dwell primarily on his coming as the Redeemer and the sin bearer. But I'm going to ask your indulgence for a few moments that you might become better acquainted with God's plan and program as the Lord Jesus Christ is included in it with respect to Israel. And we're going to look at a few verses in Ezekiel 34 and in Ezekiel 36. We were just singing a few moments ago, there shall be showers of blessing. And did you know that that was taken right out of Ezekiel 34? And in a sense, out of context. But it certainly is a blessing to pray that, to pray that way. God has announced, has denounced the wicked kings uh, on the earth, calling them shepherds who didn't care at all for, for the sheep. Then he gives the prophecy that he will seek that which was lost. And we referred earlier to Jesus' statement in the book of Luke that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And God clearly identifies who this good shepherd uh, will be when he says in verse 23, And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. You see, the prophecies consistently point to the Messiah as one who would be a descendant of David. And so the Lord very lovingly refers to his own son by the very name of David. But let's take a few moments to consider Israel's shameful past as we compare that with Israel's glorious future when the Lord Jesus comes. And to think what a future they could have had had they trusted him and received him as their Messiah, which they didn't do. God knew they wouldn't do it. And their rejection of him made possible our inclusion in the wonderful plan of God. But while we're in chapter 34, notice verse 18, Israel's abuse of privilege. Notice those terms, eaten up the good pasture and tread down the residue, drank of deep waters and then fouled of the waters. Some of us who have lived in the country, lived on a farm, acquainted with animals, we know that they can foul the very waters from which they have been, been drinking. Now this is true where you have a, a large vat or you have a, 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 a man-made pond or even a small stream that isn't flowing very quickly. The animals will walk right into it and they'll foul it up and God said, this, this is my people. This is my people. All I did for them, and they, they ate it all right, and then they destroyed. They drank of the refreshing waters that I prov uh, provided, but they fouled it up. What, what expression that is. But then concerning the future, in verse 36, he says, I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing, and I will cause the showers to come down in his season, and there shall be showers of blessing. So the next time you sing that song, next time you pray that song for the Lord to send showers of blessing, remember that it's included in the prophecy that, uh, that the Son of God, according to the flesh, is a son of David, and that he's going to reign in Jerusalem, and when he does, there will be showers of blessing upon Israel. So you remember that. In verse 27, you notice the last part of it there, and Israel shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that served themselves of them. And in verse 30, thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. Now this hasn't been fulfilled because they rejected the one that came. Oh, if people only knew how foolish it is to reject God's wonderful offer of mercy and grace 
Just as now there are people that are rejecting Jesus Christ whom they could have as their Lord and Savior, they could be forgiven, they could be saved, they could be sure of heaven, and they refused. Well, Israel did as a nation, and they've been suffering ever since. But God has promised that he's going to gather them again in the last days. What we've seen now in Israel is just a, a glimpse of what it will be. In this instance, they have gathered themselves. They've, they're still materialistic. But they're not calling upon their Messiah. That day is yet to come. Let's look at chapter 36 for just a few moments to make sure that these things get really embedded in our uh, thinking. <clears throat> Looking back at Israel's past, we go to verse 17. Verse 17 of 36. When the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it. They defiled it. Verse 18. Therefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And then he speaks of the judgment to come in verse 19. And I scattered them among the heathen, scattered them among the Gentiles, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their doings. I judged them. Notice that in their own land they defiled it, they polluted it. Then when they went into captivity, did they suddenly become a good testimony? When they went into captivity, did they, did they really start living a new life? For the Lord and were holy. Now look what he says in verse 20. And when they entered into or unto the heathen, whither they went, they, referring to Israel, profaned my holy name. When they, that is the Gentiles, said to them, These are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. Hmm. With God's blessing upon them, they polluted the land. Then when they were being spanked, they were being punished, and had gone into captivity under King Nebuchadnezzar, he said, they profaned my name. They were not a good testimony there. But God said, I'm going to bring them back. Notice in verse, verse 21, he states his purpose. Why? In verse 21, but I had pity for mine holy name. If you want an interesting uh, study for yourself, and you can do it at leisure, you don't have to hurry, you just look up the many, many passages where God speaks about his name, his holy name, and how he has a pity and a concern for his name. You remember that way back, when he gave the law to Israel, he said, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And those who were considered holy in Israel were those who thought upon his name. And in all that he does, he is so concerned about his name. And you know, uh, a term that's practically synonymous with name is what? Reputation. Reputation. See, he'd made a promise that they're going to come back, that his Messiah, his son, is going to reign over them. And he promises to take them from all of the countries where they've been scattered and make them one nation, and David, my servant, shall reign over them. And he says, it's for my holy name. I've made a promise. I don't go back on it. And in right there in the middle of verse 22, the last part of it, I do this not for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen where the Yemen went. Because they misrepresented the Lord, and he did not get the reputation that he deserved. He's going to get it. Remember that that is his overriding purpose, his glory, his honor, his, his fame. And in verse 23, And I will sanctify my great name, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, 
saith the Lord God. This is very interesting in connection with the birth of the Lord Jesus because he came to make available to Israel all of these wonders and all of these glories and these privileges and they rejected it. As it is written in the book of John, he came unto his own and his own received him not. But God has a great future for, for Israel and we ought not be we ought not to forget them during this particular season. They're celebrating or will be very shortly the feast of of lights. And yet within their own hearts and minds there is no light only darkness because as we heard this morning way back there the decision was made not to go on with the Lord they were hypocrites and they also brought in idolatry and the things that that God hated and so darkness came upon them and so it has happened when they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ a darkness has come upon them a blindness upon them if you've tried to point a, a Jew to his Messiah, to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know how difficult it is. No matter how polite he may be, no matter how he seems to be courteous and all of that, it, it's still a blind thing to him. It's a, it's, a frightening, it's a frightening thing. But God's going to lift that gloom, as we heard this morning. And notice in verse uh, 23, that I will sanctify my great name and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord. The Jews have not been a very good witness for the Lord, but they are a witness. You can't get rid of the Jew. You can't kill them. You can't annihilate them. They're here and they, they cannot be annihilated. God sees, sees to that. So in that sense, they are a witness. But they're not glorifying him as, as God as the Holy One but he's going to do it himself and notice in verse 24 for I will take you from among the heathen gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land it has not happened yet but it certainly will and then he promises more in verse 26 a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and then he reminds them again in verse 32 not for your sakes do I this saith the Lord God be it known unto you and in verse 36 then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I the Lord build the ruined places and plant that which was desolate I the Lord have spoken it and I will do it We've learned, I'm sure, that all that God does is for his glory. And here specifically, with relationship to Israel, when he brings them together and Jesus Christ comes back in power and in great glory to reign over them, it will all be for the glory of the Lord, for his name's sake. He specifically says, I'm not doing it for you. I have a higher purpose. You and I ought to relate that to the promises of salvation. We've been singing tonight, he lifted me, he rescued me, uh, and some of these other songs. And you know why he did it? Why he did it? Oh, I know the first answer is because he loved me. But how about one more question? Why did he love you? Why did he love me? It's because he had made a promise. He had made a promise to his own son. And the promise to his own son was this that not only of Israel but of other nations as well there would be those who would honor him and so in fulfillment thereof Jesus said no man cometh unto me except my father draw him and God was at work in your life to get you to see your sin to get you to see that you were lost and to get you to see that the Lord Jesus Christ had died for you and then he enabled you to trust the Savior to call upon him and to rely upon him for the rest of your life and to know that you're his for all eternity you see 
one of the messages that comes through on the, in the Bible is that God keeps his word no matter what man does he keeps his word and if you put your trust in the Lord Jesus you can be sure that your salvation is eternal it's not temporal it's not limited to your ability it's eternal now back for just a moment before we close to the promises made to Israel all through the Old Testament God held before them a beautiful picture a beautiful picture when they would be a redeemed people a rescued people a people no longer downtrodden by the Gentiles and they would have their own king and not only that but they would be the most important nation in the world and their own king their own king would stretch out his empire over all the world something marvelous to look forward to and included was in that of course was the millennium with the righteousness of the Lord and the knowledge of his righteousness covering the earth as the waters cover the sea this was what he held before them and the prophet after prophet spoke to them of this they also gave specific details of the Messiah what would be his credentials how would he be identified when he came they told where he would be born they gave the approximate time when he would be born they gave the place where he would be born many many other details that they might recognize him he would give sight to the blind he would cause the lame to walk he would do wonders in Israel these were called signs and the book of John clearly emphasizes that aspect of it and yet they were so blind they were so blind that they rejected him was the blindness something that was an accident not at all it was a blindness that they deserved because they had brought the judgment of God upon them for refusing the light refusing the truth now this is also tied up with the name of God he is insulted when people do not take him at his word but just think when you read about the thing that the uh, such uh, where just the <coughs> wolf shall lie down uh, with the sheep and, and so forth and there's perfect peace in the animal world <coughs> and uh, the portion that we just read where they can go and sleep in the woods and not be afraid of some bear coming and tearing them apart oh that was all held before them this is yours and the day came the day came when the king's herald went forth prepare ye the way of the Lord the kingdom of heaven is at hand the king himself stood before them said the kingdom of heaven is at hand then he sent out his disciples into village after village all throughout the Jewish settlements and they said the same thing the kingdom was being offered to these people but they couldn't have it if they rejected the king you know there's a lesson for us too isn't there this time of year any time of year you cannot have God's blessing without God's son you cannot have his salvation without Christ oh my heart was stirred as I heard the choir singing without him what do you have what hope do you have but if you have him God hath freely given us with him all things so there's a choice being made all the time isn't it and so people can choose they can choose to accept they can choose to reject I hope no one here tonight chooses to reject let's pray father we thank thee that we can look at this aspect of prophecy as well see what has been fulfilled and anticipate with great excitement the things that will yet be fulfilled some of the things we're seeing today now our father we pray that these thoughts will stay with us that we might truly honor the lord jesus christ 
knowing why he came unto his own and his purposes. And Father, we pray for any who are unsaved that somehow we might be a witness unto them and show them that there is one who said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So help us to point the wanderer to the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray thy blessing upon those who are meeting for other purposes and other meetings tonight. Lord, keep us reverent before thee. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm.